stream now. Yeah, what's up? Well, hello. Cheers. Cheers. Truly. <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining us for a little impromptu session on fruitless pursuits. <laughs> I came across this article today and it just, I had to send it to you. It was, I know. Well, I, the, immediately I'm, it was like, oh my God. I, I love it. And the, the, the awesome thing about it was like, I, I like just had to scroll to them. I just, I was like, for this to have any validity, there just needs to be one record at number one. And if it's not, I, I can't fuck with this list, right? Like, mm -hmm. there's just no reason to even go through this. Yeah. And so I just scrolled to number one and I was like, oh, okay. I can like go back to the start and like okay yeah. let's let's see what you have to say right right um, because because you know there's you know for that band there truly is like this one record that just like made them you know what I mean right. everything else kind of lead up to and everything else ever since has, has been like this attempt to get back to you yeah. know or well or, and and we can get to this later but I don't I don't I don't necessarily agree with the pick you know what I'm saying? Like, oh. I, I, I understand what you're saying, but I don't agree with the pick oh. for like really petty personal reasons. Like, really as, okay. as, as right. usual. <laughs> yeah, right. So, of um, course. Yeah. But you mean Jason reasons, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> so okay. everything you said, I, I, I pretty much agree with, though. And, and I think it's interesting because my first, my initial kind of skeptic reaction to this was like, Oh, they, they got a new record coming out. They're going to put this really high up on the list, right? Spin is going to fucking ball wash Chili Peppers because that's what old magazines like Spin and Rolling Stone do. Yeah, it's um, kind of surprising that, that that that's the case, but totally. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, agree. I can't believe the Chili Peppers are still a band that, like, there's, like, teenagers who are like, that's my band. Yeah. You know, and they put out a new record, and they're like, that's my record. You know? Yeah, like, well, it, yeah, it was funny, like, you know, we talk about that Pat Finnerty video, the what right. makes this song stink. And uh, for anybody so, that so hasn't good. watched it, I so really good, yeah. I should put a link in the description because it, it really is it's a great video. Um, if you haven't watched it, you should definitely watch it. Uh, but in, in one of it, he's asking, like, you know, he just asks people on the streets, like thumbs up, thumbs down, chili peppers. Yeah, right? Song, right, right. And um, the the consensus among people our age is pretty mixed, right? As one would expect. Well, but think... when he goes to like this college function and starts asking people that age, it's like you know everybody's drinking. You get cut them a little slack, but um, the overwhelming response is positive, right? Right, totally. And and it's I I can kind of get. I mean, the, the song he picks is "Dan California." Yeah. No Ter spoiler there. Terrible totally. fucking song, by the way. It yeah. is, but it's it's also one of those songs that, like, you know, like before examining it with any kind of like heavy handedness, like yeah. if that song is on in Walmart or like, um, you know, Fits. like or if I hear yeah. it, like I'm just like I'm like, all right, like this song doesn't, you know, like I'll, I I know the chorus, like it's not awful, you know, yeah. but like when when he breaks it down and you have to think about it with any kind of right logic he, or he buries music. that song oh like, well, you, well, if you watch that video you can never really hear it quite the same way again but you can't because <laughs> he because he, he all he does is think about it for one second you know what yeah. i mean from a from the standpoint of like this the sound the song the the lit the the lick the lyric and and then it just it just yeah. it wrecks it from there on yeah out. It, it totally ruins it for everybody but i mean not in a, not in a way that it's you shouldn't you know it's it's just that most songs like that you don't think about very much you know right there's a reason why you're not like going it, into it like, is very bubblegum mm -hmm. and that's you know that's yeah. one of like you know cool guys uh gripes with chili peppers is like that everything just moved that way and never quite came back but all that said maybe we should jump into this uh this list we have here sure sure absolutely Why not? okay yeah. let's uh let's see what we got um this is technology uh, advancement on fruitless pursuits so check it out yeah oh cool. look at that beautiful all right so spin magazine 
what's good? I, I, arguably, uh, this photo was probably taken at peak chili pepperness. Like that's. Oh yeah, I mean, like, look how young Flea looks. I mean, and and, and I'll say this. I mean, you know, um, <laughs> Flea doesn't really age like most people do. Like he's got no. the um, like Keith think... Richards let him into the club early on. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. He was like, he's like. So you don't think it's son. like vegan diet and yoga oh, I mean, and doing oh. uh, fucking. More uh, sun salutations with Rick Rubin. Oh, I mean, uh, I mean, sure, I'm sure that stuff fucking helps, right? But yeah. I also and 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 so does you know whatever like low flex you know um uh you know in outpatient uh you know uh, blood transfusions you know. and yeah. yeah yeah well you know whatever that shit is so right. yeah I'm, I'm all of it all of it all of it moves to the same end right you know? <laughs> the fact that he wants to continue to have sex with women that stay the same age you know like 22 or so yeah i mean and, and that's, as he grows old that's the dream so <laughs> okay so uh 12 albums number 12 interestingly is the uh the self-titled first record right right from 1984 sure um I don't know that this is number 12. Like right off right off the bat I kind of have a problem with this. It's not a great record. It's a pretty uneven record. But you uh, get why why you would I mean to me like it's this their first record. Um it's got the, a song that for you and I that are like maybe some of the first, you know, alternative songs that we ever heard. Yeah. This is like, something you'd see on 120 minutes or whatever. Totally. Yeah. Totally or like the first time like a uh, a friend's older sister like a, a song came playing from their room that you're like wait what's that you yeah. know what i mean like um and uh so i get that but it's like not a, it's not a good record you know what i mean there's songs aren't they're good but like fair like w- when's the last time you put this on yeah or ever so this on? is the one though it's got like a meters cover on it right and um, yes i think i th- no, that's that's going to be freaky styly. I think that has right. the the meters covered on it. So right. you're right, but it does have uh, "True Men Don't Kill Coyotes," which is right. probably legit, like the first song that ever popped up on the radar for the band. Um, sure. Beyond that, you're right. It's it's not it's not a great record, but number twelve, I don't know. Um, hey, do me do me a favor. Do sure. a, a little shift to your left, just so everybody can see your uh, your beautiful face and. That's better. There you go. We just want to center you up so everybody can see it. Handsome boy. That's what what people need. We should actually just do it with a filter for me. me Yeah, yeah. Um, 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 Yeah, that's cool. All right. So at number 11 is The Getaway from 2016. Right. uh, Which... uh, which you, you were just saying you didn't you know existed. <laughs> so no. that's awesome. No, I I didn't know it existed. I had no idea. Right. I've never heard of this sure. record. Uh, sure. Judging by the thumbnail of the video, not something I'm even remotely interested in uh, checking out. Um, in fact, who if you're listening, if you're like waiting with bated breath for a new Chili Peppers record to drop in 2016, man, come on. Um, but you mentioned an interesting point, and that was that, uh, with exception of Mother's Milk and before, this is the only record in their catalog that is not Rick Rubin produced. Is that correct? That's right. That's right. It's not Rick Rubin. So it's not. It's in that that lengthy Rick Rubin run. It's not Rick Rubin produced. Yep. It's a, it's their second rock record with Josh Klinghoffer, mm-hmm. who's now no longer with the band. Um, and Danger Mouse actually produces it, right? Um, right. So it's, it's so it's kind you know, of an oddball, right? It is an oddball, um, and it sounds like an oddball too, too. When you go back and listen to any of the tracks off of it, if you haven't heard any of these singles that came off of it, right? But it's not odd in the fact that, like Chili Peppers records in the, um, you know, in the aughts, you know, past it, it's a number one record as soon as it drops on Billboard. You know what I mean? It's like. It's a money maker, you know. Right. Um, so, so it still does that. Now, what's interesting to me is that, um, like, I don't even know these singles. I'm looking at the article, and and I don't recognize the singles. Goodbye, angels, and go robot. Um, yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I, mean, I just how, it, how it's so you? far. Yeah, it's so far out of my purview at this point. Sure. That, okay. Sure. So they didn't release this on Re- Relapse Records, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna know this. Um, okay. But yeah, but what what is interesting though is that like. 
apparently, um, like Josh Klinghoffer, like had like um, creative and personal differences with Rick Rubin. So they had worked on a record previously to this one. Okay. Um, and maybe it was like that relationship wasn't fruitful. And so they, that, they, they looked for someone else on those terms. Yeah. Which is, to me is like super interesting. Hmm. Um, that they would <laughs> forego like the, you know, the, uh, for lack of a better uh, descriptor, the, the devil they knew. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I think too, that like this, I don't know. It's so, it's so strange to me. Like this, this part of this band's um, history is really interesting to me because, you know, they have John Frusciante for so long or they don't, right. They start off without John Frusciante, you know, they, this rotating line of guitar right. player. And drummer. He's, he's been in and out, but he right. is, um, you know, to, in, to the, certainly the later day fans, he is the, uh, the, the guy, right. I mean, I think I, I t- honestly, to me, this band is, uh, mother's milk and blood sugar sex magic and and maybe a couple of records after right that's yeah. that's their their core of, of who they are and what the sound is um uh, and maybe it's just mother's milk right you know that's that's the band right i gotta put in a vote for uplift mofo but we'll know, get and, we'll get to that i know you do i know you yeah. do you, you, you almost it's a, that almost was a sandbag that we knew was coming right but like, <laughs> um, well you uh, did for sure yeah yeah but so um so to me um this this having this other guitar player and then you know they they fire him to bring John Frusciante back. Right. Um, it's just so it's so weird, um, and uh, you know it's it's interesting too because Josh Klinghopper had been booked on uh, Mark Maron's podcast, you know, like months before he gets fired, and then he goes on the show anyway, like like just a couple weeks after being fired. So I I listened to the interview and in, in it happening, um, and you know it's just like this kind of shock that it yeah. occurred at all, and, and right. And I just recently listened to an interview with Rick Rubin on his Broken Record podcast and John Fishante and Anthony Kiedis. And it was basically like just this this circle jerk. Yeah. Um, but uh, but it, it was you're not allowed into Rubin's circle unless you're down for the circle jerk. That's uh, clear, that's clearly. part of the fucking the thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, we're only at number 11. We need we need to move on here. But. <laughs> Okay, so at number 10 is an obvious one, right? We got the – everybody knows this record is a fucking snakeroo. Um, oh, dude, this now, there are crazy. apologists, like, now that are, like, late latter-day apologists that say it's not as bad as uh, no, oh, maybe no. it got pinched for, but – No, this d- is the worst d- record Hard disagree. This is yeah. – yeah, this is not yeah. a good record. A and, liter- okay, so check this out. One time I was literally um, – uh, man, I can't really. So I was talking to this person, and I'm like, "Hey, what, um, what, you know, what kind of music do you listen to?" And they're like, "Oh, you know, kind of everything." And then they're like, "You know what? You know what? No, I love the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and I specifically, specifically love mm-hmm. One Hot Minute. That record mm-hmm. is the best they've ever made." And I was just like, "You're like, that's like, not really. I mean, it's not really Chili Peppers, it, right?" Well, and it's like saying I like the worst shit ever, right? <laughs> so I was just like, I was like, "Yeah, you're out." But um, yeah, were next, they do, like, were they doing it in like an annoying way to be like, oh, like, no, ironically is, liking it or would they no, no, legit no. like is, those songs? This was legit. Than... And then they like they're like Dave Navarro was like the best thing they could have added to blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And it's just like it's so bad. Like it I mean, is. I, 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 well, anyway. and, and that's something they mentioned in the little write up here in the article is that, you know, the expectation, you know, after uh, Frusciante leaves that Navarro would be a great fit because. They essentially come from the same scene, and right. he's regarded as, uh, for some reason, a guitar hero. And it just, it sucks. <laughs> the record is really, really bad. So, yeah. uh, number 10, I think any, I, I didn't I didn't hear number 11, but I, I can guess that, uh, I think those are probably all interchangeable here. Like, the last three, there's, you could swap them out, and you're probably move them around as far as yeah yeah 50 percent of people are going to agree you know the other half won't but sure. um 85 freaky styly at at number nine george clinton produced i mean yeah i mean you have a you it's like you have uh, as mentioned in this you have the horn section of um uh, the meters mm-hmm. um uh or uh you know you and have they cover Casey a Parker meter song Wesley. yeah that's right um, right uh and you know so it's 
um, it's really cool. You know, I mean, there are really cool parts of it. Um, Catholic School Girls is cool. It is a fun song. Yeah. Um, but it's, still, like, it, eh. it's uneven. Again, yeah. much like their first record, it is uneven. It's got some really interesting spots. And I think of its time, um, it was it was an interesting and different record, right? Right. Uh, I haven't listened to it in a long time, so I couldn't tell you what it sounds like now to like my today ears. But, um, Wait, but okay, but when you liked it, how old were you? I was. This would have been like ninety one, ninety two, probably. Right. Okay. So I like discovered Mother's Milk and then went backwards. Sure. Like most, Mother's most Milk people. hit, and I was like, "Oh, this is my new favorite fucking band." At right. Agreed. You know, right. Twelve sure. or whatever I was, and um, and then I went backwards, and so, you know, I had all those tapes for sure, um, and I remember parts of maybe I like just saying the word uh, the words freaky styly, okay. but um, I think it deserves better than than nine. Maybe maybe not by much, but it, it well, seems a little. Let, let's go little through the, the rest of the list, and then, okay. and then you see you see where you it would put it in. Then. Number so, eight, by the way, uh, two thousand two, which you can't you can't not know uh, the the singles off this record. Well, that's all. Everywhere. That's all I yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so the radio I, still was still a, a thing, you know, in two thousand two. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, these songs were at th- that point in our lives, we were working in restaurants, yeah. um, you know, like that. You they, they, those songs were always on kitchens, um, you know, like, uh, I mean, it's it's not it, bad. It, it's not bad. You know, no, it's not terrible. No, it, it's um, it's inoffensive and it's just uh, edgy enough that people can feel like I'm into something cool. Um mm-hmm. And this is going to become a recurring theme in in our conversation about the Chili Peppers, but uh, like them, dislike them, indifferent. Like I've been in all those places over the gamut of my you know my career with the Chili Peppers. Um, Chili Peppers have got me laid more than a, a couple times. Well, that, I, I mean, I, mean, well, I just like them. <laughs> I, I know. Where, where, where so, are you mad at right now? So, Why are you mad at this guy? <laughs> like, I, I don't think I've ever done that for you. I mean, like, what? No, it, uh, you certainly haven't. Even, even <laughs> a, a bro hando. Um, no, but so it, it, it's definitely one of those bands, though, that like, you know, chicks liked in that era. Oh, and shit. you could, it could be on, and it wasn't like, you know, I was definitely not into this record or anything. But you could put it on, and it wasn't like completely offensive to your sensibilities. Okay, and you could tolerate it long enough to you know, make make some things happen. Right. All right, uh, at number seven. So this is the new one, which if I was any kind of uh, legit YouTuber, I would have at least listened to a fucking <laughs> single, <laughs> but. Um, but I didn't, and uh, I, so I've, I've I can't. Heard, well, I can't I'll, be I'll bothered, Thorn. So, so I, tell me, <laughs> tell me about it. Because I did listen to that interview with Anthony Kiedis and John Frusciante. Yeah, they did play. You know, um, Rick Rubin made the point to like let's listen to these songs. So they played some of the songs. Okay, and I think the thing that I found interesting was that the songs weren't bad, right? But yeah. like, I don't know. They also weren't. I mean, I, I, the older I get, the 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 more I laugh at Anthony Kiedis and his lyrical choices. <laughs> like just the things he strings together as sentences. So, is any of that influenced by our our dear friend Pat Finney? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially <laughs> now. But like, but you can't however, you can't like unhook it dude, from your brain. It's like dude, Velcro. You, you guys stop watching what we're doing and go watch that video <laughs> please, because please and then do. come back but come back do us the favor coming back to us but um uh no i mean he, like it's the things he says like and and you know like let's i th- we were you and i were once interviewing of this, this great band called the pleasure club right and we i, I asked them you know they're, they're, uh, one of the records had just come out and i asked them why they didn't you know print the lyrics um because the singer 
um james hall it, james hall does these yep. really which who is amazing right when you look yep. at his history it's just it's insane um i wish i'd known more of that then um uh he's one of those singers that can sing something very words that you know but make them sound like three different words sometimes right. and so I, you know which is a, a cool thing in my opinion so i you know asked why and he said well don't you think sometimes like uh, you know, rock lyrics just come off as bad poetry, and I said, "Ah, that's fair." You know, yeah. Um, and, and, and when you, ding, if you ding, just, ding. Anthony Kiedis, <laughs> yeah, 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 it, d- exactly. So if you read Chili Pepper lyrics, I just, I, 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 it's like stupid. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, ding it, dong, I mean, ding. it really hits you when you're like, you know, fifteen or sixteen. Like that's, yes. it, it's pretty profound when you're when you're a fifteen or sixteen year old. Well, but like oh, I, when you're in your thirties and, you know. He's talking yeah, about and you, and you've been in love with Bob Dylan for like 20 years. Yeah, Louisiana no, but, and Indiana. It's like, yeah, I've fucking heard that before, bro. Yeah, Come yeah on. where's that from? Huh? Yeah, no, but um, well, but in fairness, you know, they're they're an easy rhyme. Um, but it is it is also uh, you know, like I don't know, man. He's it's just it's ridiculous. So anyway, so hearing him like break down the lyrics was just like. It painful, right? Yeah. I was just like, "Oh man, you want to crawl like, under your chair?" Yeah, and... like, dude, don't don't do this for anybody, not you, not me. <laughs> don't, don't, don't yeah, save that. some mystery, man. Yeah, leave it as cryptic as possible, bro. Yeah. Um, and, but so so I thought that was that was pretty pretty weird. But like, in general, um, I feel like I could be wrong, but I feel like you know the Red Hot Chili Peppers are mining a it's a gold mine, right? for them, for record labels, for whatever. And so the re- regurgitating this this um, formula is fine for them, you know, in that reason. And they seem to return to it and be perfectly happy and it not bother them. And, and Ruben's uh, still cashing his checks, so no clearly. complaints on his end. And in the, in He's the, like, the, Anthony, you got, got any more fucking poetry books <laughs> laying around, buddy? Come on. And, and also, you know, like, you know, as you mentioned with the bet for anything earlier, it's like that college, that supply chain of those college age kids come, you know, every four years it comes around. Right. And they put on a new record and that group of people is like, oh, I guess like that's like this record. Right. You know, um, and so they they do that. And so it's, to them, it's new. Right. Mm. Um, but I think when you go back to, you know, like as we're going to get to, you know, what we consider the, the, the couple best records of these guys. Yeah. Um, there is some. The formula is laid. Therefore, you get the really like the gold, the nuggets, mm-hmm. and then they, and then you have to go back and try to recapture that stuff, and so you end up with lyrics like ding dong, kind of ding, disparate you know what I'm pieces. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. for sure. So, so, and I don't. With that said, I don't think this this record's terrible, but I don't know. It, Will you listen to it again? No. Yeah. Okay. Not on purpose. Next, um, 2011's "I'm With You." Again, never fucking heard of her. Um, <laughs> 2011. Trying to think what was going on in my life at that point. Obviously, not the Chili Peppers, um, right? Through no fault of their own, I'm sure. But this is another album with uh, Josh Klinghoffer. Is that correct? Uh, it is. Like it's like his first. Okay. Um. Uh. Uh. Yeah, I'm looking because they're talking about it, replacing him. Yeah, so it's like his first record with them. Mm. Um. Uh, which he, he only does two, right? But like, um, yeah. So I mean, I don't see, and I guess like, oh, let's, I wonder, what, I wonder who wrote this. Like that would be the 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 key is like, how old Al Shipley is, right? That's um, uh, as the author, because you know these these records could have that, you know that that presence for him. Um, but you know, it's also you know, you know another song you don't know. The Adventures of Rain Dance Maggie became the band's. Twelfth yep. number one song on Billboard's alternative chart. So, yeah, um, don't know that one. So I yeah, can't. So I mean, right. So this record probably was another number one record. You know, um, you know, making a buttload of money for a bunch of people. Um, so you know, how are they going to hate that? How does that? How does that happen? I mean, that's uh, it's a rhetorical question, obviously, but it's it's confounding to me to some degree, like. They had a tw- the twelfth number one song on the Billboard alternative charts, uh-huh. and and I haven't heard the song. I mean, it just seems really unusual. 
And again, we're talking 2011. So yeah, that, that terrestrial like radio is dead, but it's but kind not, of there's probably dead, some dead. death throws, right? Right. Um, yeah, I, I missed this one completely, so I can't say anything about it. Uh, the next one at number five. So we're getting in the top five. That's kind of where the, the meat of this thing is, unless your whole uh, impetus is to shit on the chili peppers, which is it's kind of fucking, I feel a little bad. It's a little low hanging fruit. It, and, it's because you're like, because that's what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of. I mean, well, I, I, I have, think, a, I, I do I have a, a soft place in my heart for like uh, nostalgic chili peppers. And we'll we'll get there, obviously. Yeah, but also, also, I would just like to say this: like, if the Red Hot Chili Peppers tour bus pulled up in front of your house and they went, "Come and get on, Jason. Let's go tool around for a day," you'd be like, "Yeah!" The little girl, the little girl in you would yeah. get all excited. Agree. Out there that's and, that's that's fair. That's fair. yeah. yeah. Um, Stadium Arcadium, two thousand six. This is so, so the this is a big. A, the, go, ahead. go ahead, please. I was just gonna say this is officially when the band completely lost all meaning to me mm. because this record came out and I, I heard some of the songs um, from it, um, like Hump to Bump and Warlocks and um, like I've, I remember seeing it in a friend of mine's, like you know, like you know that that jumbo case of CDs we used to have in our car. Yeah, you know, like in this like big little yeah, zip like, lock almost thing. a photo <laughs> album. <laughs> yeah, uh, weighing fifty um, pounds. Right. And so I remember seeing that in, in his car and being like, are you fucking kidding me? Oh, you're like, clowning you him. I was like, you can't seriously own this record. He's like, it's great. I was like, play me two great songs on this record. It's a double. It's and he double put on record. Danny California. No, he put on like Hump to, like these other ones because I okay. knew that one. Right. Right. And I'm like, I'm like, OK, these these are awful. Like, you know, what I mean, it's it's just like anyway. So I, I wasn't yeah. impressed. But this is but, you know, from I think I, this is like at their peak commerciality right oh absolutely i mean this this i guarantee you and i don't know this for sure but i would be highly surprised if this this wasn't ultimately a number one record um Mm -hmm. you know that they didn't make a bunch of fucking cash off of it um you know as and it was you know a double record these these are traditionally not very they don't sell very well 122 Uh, minutes it was a double cd yeah that's what i'm saying oh just fucking kill me now over two hours of music. Yeah, that's that's, that's crazy. crazy. Nobody needs, nobody needs two hours of the Chili Peppers. No, nobody yeah. certainly needs two hours of like new, poppy Chili Peppers. I well, think what's fair what, to say, I guess right? what's what's in- interesting is that this is pretty. Um, so as I, um, have been, you know, like I heard those those. Um, uh, interviews and I've, as I've you know read kind of tonight as we're preparing to do this, I like this is they say this all the time like the, it comes out of their mouths constantly. Oh, we had twenty or thirty songs going into the recording session for this record, right? And it's just like that's it. I mean, I don't I don't know how many of you out there have you know like had had a band and tried to do stuff like that, but that's insane. Like even for really great bands, like they're you know they're usually going to come in like people are going to have three or four songs each, something like that. Maybe they have ten, maybe they have thirteen, but but it's just an insane amount of songs to to constantly be you know kind of conjuring, and and I I, I it's just I guess it's the way they work right, and there's like some sort of process of elimination. So well, and, and by virtue of that, I think this is where you see things like hit the wall as far as like the formula goes. Right. Like there's there's early records where they, the, you know, the one that we're going to find at number one, it, you know, is the the best version of that. That's like the most defined version of that sound. And then, as you said earlier, everything else has kind of been like trying to chase it. Um, but this is where the formula runs completely out of steam for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean. Do you? I mean, but again, like, how, do you, so you, you're slightly familiar with this record? Not at all familiar. No, I mean, just, just I don't even recognize the singles by name necessarily. Right. Um, I certainly know uh, Danny California. Right. And I'm we sure I know other songs on this on this record. Um, I don't recognize them by by name. Yeah, there's. I mean, when you look at the when you go to Wikipedia and look at the the numbers of record sales, just you know. Um, so this it but, says it came out in the same 
a kind of spade of records is melancholy and the infinite sadness. Um, no, that's what you're what they're referring to is like it's it's that oh the the, the running record, time the running the, time the, right yeah, right right I got you yeah. I got you and it's 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 just it's like it's saying it's less than a minute long, long yeah long. but so when you look at the amount of records that this record has sold like you know and I don't know what the two date on this Wikipedia is but like just like four million units in the United States alone that's that's four times platinum. Yeah, I mean, you have Europe. That's two times that. So I mean, you know, they they played, they made a fucking. They're shit fucking like crushing and yeah, touring on this for sure. Yeah. Um. So okay, here we are. We find ourselves at number four, which should have been number one to me. Well, um, I mean, I I think it's a strong contender for no, number one, and well, I for sure fully admit that it's because this was my introduction to the band. Um, but I also would argue that like it's a great it's a great record. Like all these songs are, are rippers. They haven't quite locked into that. Uh, the, the, the way that it feels like it's phoned in on some of these other records, right? That it's, it's a, it's a formula and they're just like, okay, let's just do it in another key. Do that slappy thing. And I'm going to (laughs) hit. So to me, mother's milk is like, that's what they still retained a little bit of underground uh, credibility. Um, the songs were still a little, a little grimy. Um, and it, it wasn't, uh, they weren't the polished band that we know them as now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly the production wasn't, didn't sound that way. Right. I mean, um, the way it sounded was, it wasn't, it wasn't as, um, you know, uh, clear and crystal clear. I mean, there's like, you know, there were, there were, I don't want to call a lot it, less separation of instruments on it for sure. Yeah. And, it, and I don't want to call it sloppy. It just was like, had more it was, of a it live was a, sound yeah, it was it. more of a DIY kind of punk sounding record for sure. Um, and it also, I mean, like and that might thing, be mistaken for, uh, I'm, I'm not trying to give, our, our old friend Mr. Rubin too much credit, but there there is definitely a big jump between the way this record sounds and the, and the next. Uh, which one is better is completely up to taste, right? But so I do think that um, uh, the thing that it's like the thing about this record, and, and they mention it in this little blurb, is is the kind of tumble and turmoil that the band is emerging from recording this record you know you have Hill Slovak you know dying of an overdose yep. Jack Irons leaving the band because of that um, you know and then you know the core members kind of just um, you know finding their place you know kind of through that and I think you know that pain that suffering that uh, desire to succeed in spite of that is present in the energy and intention of the yeah certainly some of the songs reflect that you also have the introduction of Frashanti on guitar uh, and his performance on this is i mean he came out of the gate ripping you know right you can't yeah, totally you can't discount anything that he did on this record it's all pretty and and maybe that's what i appreciate about it uh his performance in reference to everything else is like how, how raw it sounds. It really is kind of a, um, it's not, everything's at, at the surface. Like there's scars and all, right? Yeah. To, I mean, I, I agree. And I think, you know, that's kind of what point out. Now something I didn't realize, um, uh, because I guess I did, wasn't as, as tuned into the liner notes when this, when this record was like in my hand all the time, mm-hmm. um, is that, um, you know the Jimi Hendrix cover that's on the record Fire, right? Um, is actually has Slovak and Irons on it, mm. um, so that's not John Frusciante and, right. and Chad Smith. In fact, in fact, like half of well, you know, like two thirds of the drumming on the record is uh, D.H. Polygro, um, right? Correct. And, and then there's you know Irons here uh, as he pops in. Um, yep. So it's it's interesting um, that there's you know you're kind of still looking at a mix, so they're they're kind of recording this record as people were coming and going um they're still recording things but you know there's two covers on the record um they make both of them theirs which is kind of not what's done i mean i don't know like we're, we've talked about this 
yeah recently you know um but like um you know higher ground basically doesn't a, i mean that song is my introduction to the band sure and, and seeing flea you know on mtv going bananas just slapping the fuck out of his bass and the whole vibe that the the band you know emitted at that time was just like sure. it my 13 year old self or just was like that's it i don't know why it makes me feel the way it does but that's that's what i'm looking for sure um it's also their breakthrough record in a lot of ways right this is this is the first introduction for a lot of people um and as we mentioned before what you usually do when you discover a band like that is you start going back in their catalog um which at number three we find their previous record, Uplift Mofo Party Plan, which I find it interesting that they, you know, again, I think a lot of the numbering is, is probably arbitrary, but I do find it interesting that they put Uplift Mofo at three instead of four. Like, I think you could probably flop those. I think Mother's Milk is definitely the better record. But, man, oh, yeah. uh, it's it's uh, it's got some great songs on it, you know? Yeah, behind the sun is still like a, a Red Hot Chili Peppers song that I think is 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 maybe like from that those early years because to me like those first you know two or three records really end up being like a handful of songs. You know yeah. what I mean? Like it could have been right, like, right, like right. those records break down to like an EP. Really, yes. You know, um, um, just it, it, it's, it's relative to quality, I suppose. You know, um, uh, so I, I find it really interesting that it's so high on the list as it doesn't. It's not like this is the record. It's not like every girl in a brown hat right before Coachella plays this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, this isn't the new um, rumors or something like that. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So I find it weird that it is where it is. Yeah, for sure. Um, I do like it a lot. That's why when I scroll down to number two, I go, ah, I don't know about that. Um, well, but I get that. Like number yeah. two has a side of, aside from, what we're going to talk about next, this record has the most, um, singles sing like, and like on the radio all the time. Yeah. Probably still, even, even in what is radio now, which is like whatever Spotify playlist or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, I bet, you know, you know, 2000, you know, Ots rock, um, I still have these songs on it. Yeah. Right? Um, so I, I, you know, these are still songs that like, these are basically make them classic rock at this point. You know, these right. are, these are songs that would get played on classic rock at this point. Um, and it makes sense to me that this record is in the top five for sure. Yeah. I um, would agree with that. I think number it, two it, is maybe a little bit of a reach, but um, yeah. Cause I mean, mother, it, this is definitely not mother's milk, you know, right, I mean? but right. it's, it is commercially, it makes sense on spin. Yeah, this for is sure. So high yeah. This, this record fucking crushed as far yeah, as it, it, sales oh, went. This is, made, it probably do you think this record sold better than you know everybody knows what number one is at this point but do you think this record sold oh, yeah. better e- easily easily sold better yeah um, um, uh, because so because thorn in 1990 i mean, yes correct correct so thorn in in 1999 um were you playing this record was were the chili pepper did they still hold any currency for you not no but like um i still um uh that song um it's it's the same thing it's like this would be on kitchen radios as i was you know coming through or whatever yeah there, and and i so i mean there's there's songs on it that i i still like um that 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 have um a cut of that time and place but they it wasn't like i didn't buy this record it wasn't something i was interested in right. i mean the songs came on. I didn't. I didn't say, "Oh, this sucks." Turn it off. But mm. like, they weren't. Um, I like thought of them wistfully. I was like, "Oh, I remember when I liked to, used to like the Red Hot Chili Peppers." <laughs> um, uh, you know, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. You know, dismiss it out of hand. But right. you know, I definitely think this is the record that cemented them as, you know, um, alternative rock or rock mainstays. You know, this is why they still get to play you know festivals and what have you i mean you know and, and let's be for real like they continue to make number one records yeah you know that that continues to put them in those places so uh drum roll not needed we all know what's next right and here it is yeah. uh 19 
91's Blood Sugar Sex Magic. Um, it was fucking everywhere. Uh, and due in no small part to uh, the video for Give It Away premiering on MTV, not only on like the, the sub shows that kids like us would watch, but it was afternoon programming without a doubt. Well, and it, it was very it, like, you know, it was very groundbreaking in yeah. terms of the way it looked. It was. And I mean, I think a couple, I mean, they did a, a bunch of, uh, I mean, this is another, you know, we forget, but this is another record that put out, had a bunch of signal singles. Mm. Um, they Ton. were all on the radio. Uh, they were all had videos for them. It was at a point at which MTV was still a big deal. Um, and you know, all of them were big, big videos. So, I mean, you know, this th like, and it's forgotten, like everybody says Nirvana, you know? Um, yeah. and, and it's easy to dismiss the Red Chili Peppers because Mother's Milk has already, her, had already been made, was already a, a, a big deal. Yeah. Um, but, but that was this, a college radio record. Like we're was. talking I, about, this is next level. That's right. This is next level. And they, you know, they were as much a part of, you know, Gene's Addiction, um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Nirvana. I mean, and Gene's Addiction and Red Hot Chili Peppers, like, opened a gate that Nirvana was able to come through, right? Yeah. Um, but I mean, Smashing Pumpkins as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 true. I mean, I mean, they came I, later, but yeah. I mean, I saw Chili Peppers on this tour, and their opening acts were Pearl Jam and Smashing Pumpkins. Oh, well, that's pretty dope. Yeah, and um, I think Ten had just come out, and yeah, I mean, basically uh, it's the same year. Yeah, and then I don't think Siamese Dream had quite come out. No, think, they would have been they would have been touring on Gish at that yeah, time. Yeah. Um, so, so I had never heard of either. Of, I had never heard either of the opening. But like I had heard a little bit about Pearl Jam because obviously Ten was was had come out and or was getting ready to come out at that time. Yeah, and then think, and then Smashing Pumpkins was like at that time. Even though I lived in the Midwest, it was not on my radar at all so for me it was i remember like the the year of like this year because it was like a bunch of like you know you had um you had this come out um nirvana um never mind you have 10 come out you know you have this whole and i remember like being sucked up into it you know like i just happened to like be one of my best friends his older sister like um hooked up with dudes who <laughs> um uh who were in who were like rockers right who were yep. in bands and stuff like that so they were kind of in the know so they, they were playing these records while we were like tagging along in the back of the car or whatever sure um and so that's how i was kept coming into them but of course i thought of them as mine right mm -hmm. um as you do at that age like this is my discovery my little world and as as they became the, these juggernauts like they became every because they were everybody's they weren't mine right of course. but they became everybody's you know um it it, it 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 i i connected with that feeling of this like sell, band selling out and everything just like everybody did at the time yeah. because you know because it was this place where you were discovering this music now like these the stupid jock like this too it right? wasn't so special it, anymore right yeah. right so so there was there was that part of it but um for sure this is this is where i walk away from this band yeah but i mean this is the light. I don't even know that I actually own this record. You couldn't, you couldn't not hear it. I mean, everybody had it and I right. heard it a million times. Um, as I alluded to before I had, uh, the, the side benefit of like it becoming so popular and this band becoming so popular. I definitely got, uh, residual like high school hand jobs with this as a soundtrack in the background. It's, there's, I mean, multiple, multiple i'm sure so that's that's worth keeping it in the pantheon to me uh just for the you know the rose colored glasses that i that i viewed yeah, that yeah, yeah. but um at the same time it was the beginning of the end for me with this band well i think i mean I, I, you know and well it's interesting because for a lot of people this is the beginning of the beginning you know right. like this is the True. first record they encountered and you know it was just and it it you know it is good and it doesn't have even in all of its because it's a long record too i mean i think you know it's like over 12 songs um but like 
you know, it doesn't have some of the ridiculousness that, excuse me, and maybe it's only ridiculousness through repetition that, you know, he is his lyrics will have or yeah, yeah. some, some of the, um, the, the tropes of Frusciante and Flea, you know, not that it's, they're terrible. It's just like, you know, they have these places that they go, you know, that, yeah. that, that wickety wickety wah, like, um, Stratocaster and the, the slap fender, ba- you know, jazz bass, um, uh, he plays a stingray, man. What do you, you don't know shit about the Chili Peppers, bro? Okay, well, you better fucking gonna... check yourself. Well, that's really interesting <laughs> because I was just watching a thing with him, and he was talking about how he has this, this jazz, you know, this Fender jazz bass that um, Damien Hurst gave him. He's got these butterflies all over, and he plays it all the time just yeah. for the record. So yeah, well, um, he he played a, a Music Man stingray. That was his main his main. Okay. Bass. okay. Anyway, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ask a gear nerd. Anyway. Yeah, right. um so the the thing that we didn't mention, we should get to real quick before we wrap this up, and I'll let you go to bed. But um, this is this is the first uh, Rick Rubin record. Yep. And he's often as he as he usually is. He was given a lot of credit for um, the performance of this record and the way it sounded, and uh, even uh, inspiring some of the the songs through encouraging them as young artists to, uh, as the story goes, uh, dig into Anthony Kiedis's notebook to retrieve this poem that became Under the Bridge, which was maybe not the biggest song because there's a lot of fucking monsters on this record, but it was big. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm curious too, and I'm, I'm, I'm going back, I mean, at the time, because of the the heights this this record hit, I mean this. I think it had this had a lot to do with getting Rick Rubin to the next level. You know, at that time. Right. Yeah, they both know, definitely he, benefited from this record career. Oh, wise. It, it made oh, made both of their careers in a lot of ways. For sure, and I, I think that's why you have Rick Rubin kind of like coming back to. He gets that right, um, mm-hmm. but like you know, it's um, you know they they rent this and and they talk about in this article. You know, they rent this. Um, uh, mansion in Hollywood, haunted, and you know it's like Houdini, it was like a Harry Houdini house, but like you know he lived wasn't. in this other yeah 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 it's like yeah. it's one of those places, but um so it's haunted it's this big house um you know they all lived in um as well as recorded into so I mean I think it's like has all this you know kind of that lore about it and I think it is one of those experiences that is often excuse me, um, transitional for bands and, and artists of that age, you know, like when they're like yeah. thrust together in an environment like that and they're forced to live and work because they have to, right? Yep. Um, it, it usually, you usually have these heightened results. Yeah. Um, and it's, and, it's the, it's their second record with this lineup. Right. And there's a cohesion there and it's, um, it's hard to, it's hard to pull it apart. I don't think it's fair and we all know how I, how I feel about Rick Rubin, but it, it you know is who hard this to... record. Do you know who engineered this record? Uh, Brendan O'Brien. Yeah, totally. Brendan yeah. O'Brien. And and it's like, it's Sylvia know. Massey might be on this one too, but I, I know okay. Brendan O'Brien was like the, the engineer and I, he even, I he bet plays on some, some of the songs, I bet Andy Wallace mastered it. I'm, I, I've not looked at it, but I, how we wind bet... mastered. Okay. Um, but, but I was yeah, going to yeah, say bet, but I'm not. I take it back. But yeah, Brandon O'Brien um, engineering it. Yeah. Um, he pl- he plays on like you know he's like the organ on "Suck My Kiss" and "Under the Bridge" and "Give mm-hmm. It Away" and the Mellotron and "Breaking the Girl" and "If I Have to Ask" and Sir Psycho. Like he's all over this record. Yeah, yeah. Um. And and this is right at the time when he gets snagged by Rick Rubin to come work for him as an engineer. Mm-hmm. Right. This is like out of that you know, black crow shit. He's getting right. sucked in. This, this may be that first record. Um, but, uh, it's, it definitely, you know, seven times platinum in the United States, 7 million units, you know, this is to date, I'm sure. So, I mean, you know, it's, it was a big deal for all of them. Um, you know, it's, I mean, it's just like a big deal, right? Um, it's certainly, I mean, in a, in a year of huge records, like we already like beyond that, we've got um, 
Rage Against the Machines first record, right? Around the same time. Uh, yep. And mm-hmm. then uh, Tool pops up somewhere in the next year or two. They pro- I don't know whether Opiate was out yet or not, but it's it's all like it's all living within like a two year span. So um, for it to have retained as much significance as it has uh, contrasted against all the other like big acts that came out around that time, I think it speaks for itself. And, you know, I, I, I feel like I've taken my turn shitting on, on the chili peppers and this is not my record, but I totally see why this is number one i get it yeah, it's not my I, number one but i i i understand i mean to me this i mean like th- uh, this ri- list needs some rearranging but honestly blood sugar sick magic as a number one yeah like the arguments for it are way greater than the arguments against it like and the arguments Agreed. that you have for it against it are just personal yeah, like, absolutely you know, you, and, and you and and you say it yourself i get why it's number one right yeah so so this 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 is the, it's funny because like like I said I just scrolled to the bottom and I was like what's for number one yeah and then I'll look at this with with contempt <laughs> or with you know agreement you know yeah. knowing that you at least have something in 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 place and when I start the really in the top five I think there's just a couple you know there's like of course like with everything there's something that doesn't belong and then there's just some rearranging well it know? just makes you question like what what is the metric by which we're arranging. And of course, it's a stupid list, so there isn't one. But uh, you know, if you're talking about record sales, um, then certain ones make more sense than others. And if you're talking about like actual uh, quality of content, then I think an argument can be made for others. But in general, I'm actually uh, pretty impressed. That I mean, you kind of expect spend a shit the bed or you know i mean they're a little better than rolling stone i guess but i don't expect much from those publications and they seem to have got it pretty right so yeah i mean i i think to you know looking into this al shipley person um you know he i think he he's he's got a, a you know he's a relatively decent music critic i'd say mm. um he needs a new headshot for sure but um <laughs> uh you know don't we like, all yeah um but i think for the most part you know the things he's got here and probably got the 10 bucks he got paid to, to write this um i think i think he did a decent job i mean i think i think he he, he got as close to a gant rise you're going to so. yeah well i appreciate you checking in with me on uh, what is uh, a little later than we normally do this but i thought i thought that was fun i was glad you're you're down to jump on and talk about it because it certainly um is worth discussing Oh, and yeah. um, thanks to everybody for joining us. We do appreciate it. Um, definitely don't click any of the buttons below. And uh, don't do that. To check in with us next time because I, I think these are fun to do. I like doing the little kind of one off topics instead of our two hour rants sometimes. You know, those are good yeah, too, but for sure. It, I, as, a, as a side note, just an end to this, it's like, like Anthony Kiedis, like, okay, so. For people who don't know, in this record, in the sleeves of this um, this 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 CD and vinyl, when it came out, were like these pictures of the, all of the the people's different tattoos, right? And like, um, if you look at Anthony Kiedis from like what is this ninety one on, like yeah. maybe he got like two more tattoos, but like he didn't like you know he's not like sleeved up or something. Like that. He didn't become like no, California that's biker. that's I mean, and it's hard to believe now, but. There, there was a legit time in the late 80s, early 90s where, quote unquote, tribal tattoos were not the, uh, the domain of like uh, guys wearing Ed Hardy shirts. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jersey short types. Yeah. Yeah. No, um, it's so funny because that was and because of this band. Right. I was like, oh, I really would be into I was like that was a tribal arm band was a tattoo i wanted to get when i was like, you know, <laughs> yeah. this, this age. Like barbed wire yeah. yeah thank god no but um and so i was yeah. like oh that would be cool so i feel like um so happy with myself that i was like that I grew out of that and i was like oh maybe i'm just not like a tattoo person because i keep changing my mind as to what it would be wah, and i can't <laughs> 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 
dude. Man, I love that about you, though. You yeah. gotta be able to laugh at yourself. If you can't fucking laugh at yourself, what's the fucking? Point? I you know I agree, a hundred percent. 100 percent there was a point in my life where i was like i'm probably gonna get that covered up and then eventually i was like no i'm i'm just not i'm like, just let, not like fucking live with it yeah. and and i think there's something i've had cool tattoo about. artists tell me they're like no i'm not gonna cover that you gotta <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta live with that just fucking yeah. roll with it so yeah yeah that's well is. i think that's kind of there's a beauty of that you know what I mean? there is and i've grown into that for sure yeah <laughs> well that's thanks awesome. again for joining man I love you to death, and I'm glad that we can do this. Um, I hope you get a good head start on your week, and uh, we'll we'll chat soon, right? So soon. All right. Love you, man. Take it easy, brother. All right, brother.